Before the advent of COVID-19, huge political rallies during the campaigns could point at the popularity of a candidate compared to their competitors. However, such crowds may not necessarily translate into votes for the particular candidate on the election day. Ronald Mukasa Senkubuge is vying for the position of member of parliament for Kampala Central. One of the things which is inevitable is that there are many undecided voters. Undecided voters are looking for who has the support that I can be able to join. And that's one of the reasons why just coming together in numbers is important. Uh, anyone who has been on a campaign trail will tell you that we see two things. When we are on a campaign trail, uh, when you meet a team, they want to hear your agenda, but they also want to find out whether you have supporters. And I think that that's sometimes that's what the crowd does. A week ago, the Electoral Commission banned open-air campaigns in 16 districts, including Kampala Metropolitan, Greater Mukono, Wakiso and Masaka districts in a bid to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The ban on, uh, on, on election meetings with a few days left to the, 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 the election is certainly a big challenge. That's the heart of an election. The campaigns are the heart of an election. When you kill or take out the campaign, it's like you've killed an election. And it is true that the candidates have been denied to deliver a chance to deliver their messages, but also the voters have been denied a chance to access information regarding the process. That is why even today in this meeting here, when they asked the young people who are the MPs standing in Kampala, they could only name three. Does it mean that in those areas the elections are going to be postponed? No, we are all voting on 14th. So every person must be given the chance to reach the voters because you are going to vote for somebody whom you have not seen. NTV engaged various candidates to explain how the campaign ban has affected their vote hand. Uh, given the over-commercialization of uh, the politics of Uganda today, when you reach someone at home, you say, leave me with my soda, give me with my water. And at the end of the day, uh, when you don't leave them with that water, it also uh, poses a campaign. Um, but two, when you used to have bigger rallies, you'd have a rally within one village, all people gather there, you spend less time there and move to another village. But now, even then, when you have very many people there and you have your supporters, they would easily change other people who are not supporting you. Despite the challenges, many candidates have resorted to door-to-door -door campaigns. This person shall tell you whether he or she is going to vote for your candidate or not. Some people are open to that level. Then, if you find that they will not vote for your candidate, through influence you can talk to them and then they give you right feedback and correct feedback. The other advantage is that you get to identify community challenges from individual, rather through individual uh, challenges as you look for the vote. There is a lady who came to me. The, uh, the, there was domestic violence in her home. And she explained to me the circumstances that led to everything. If I was holding a mass rally, really, this lady wouldn't have come to me. But this one gives a touch with the community and it informs you. That means if you have the opportunity to go to the liberating process, you are going to be able to represent people from an informed point of view. Because we have not been having that opportunity to reach out to people. We just have a perception of what the community is like. The executive director of the Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy in Uganda, SEDU, Charity Karebo Aimbisibwe, told NTV that many Ugandans do not know the procedures of how to cast a valid vote. There is a problem if you fold the ballot paper like that. This is a sample ballot paper that we had. Now, if you fold it like this, and you had a thumbprint, you're a villager who just did your thumbprint here, this ink here, is going to touch the next box down there. It will be regarded a spoiled ballot paper. So this ballot paper has to be folded longitudinal like that, such that the thumbprint does not go onto the next box. Ahimbi Siwe made the remarks on the sidelines of a civic engagement with Makere University students on the right to vote. They could only name four presidential candidates in most of the places, 75% of the places where we went. However, during the exercise, of the seven students present, Sedu found out that 20 of them did not have their names 
on the National Voters Register. When I checked for my name, it wasn't there. So we went for, for the, during the update, I went and did the update. Uh, during the display, I checked for the name, it's not yet there. I did try to cross-check whether I was in the register, and I was. So I was comfortable with the whole idea. Then later, when we were uh, doing elections for those uh, youth, youth um, elective positions, around, I think, uh, early September, September, October, I went back to cast my vote uh, in light that I thought I was in the register, and now I wasn't. I registered here at Okuruma Hall, it's where I was staying. I wanted to vote at Okuruma Hall. But surprisingly, when the register, registration form came back, I checked my name, it was not there. So I'm surprised how I vote, yet I'm not in the register. But unfortunately, when the register came, I checked my name. I was not anywhere. I tried to communicate to people in charge of the voters' register. They told me I'm nowhere. I checked. This could imply that many Ugandans may turn up to vote only to find their names missing on the voters' register. Jingo Francis, NTV.